Mayor Cianci was found guilty. The mayor stared straight ahead, no emotion at all. The first count, overall umbrella RICO conspiracy, Mayor Cianci found guilty. Citizen Cianci, he dominated the local political scene for decades until a corruption conviction sent him packing. Now, Vincent Buddy Cianci is back, no longer mayor of Providence, and by the weekend, no longer an ankle bracelet wearing ward of the federal prison system. But he's back and about to rejoin society. Hello again, everyone. I'm Gene Velocetti, live from Water Place Park, overlooking the backdrop of Buddy's rise and fall. Over the next half hour, we'll examine Rhode Island's reaction to the impending release of the old boss and provide a behind-the-scenes look at an award-winning documentary about his life. In fact, Buddy, the rise and fall of America's most notorious mayor will be shown without commercial interruption right after this broadcast. So let's begin now with the voice of the people in NBC10's Mario Hilario. Convicted Mayor Vincent Buddy Cianci was never shy about claiming credit for what became known as the Providence Renaissance. So we decided what better place to come than water fire to find out what people think about the upcoming release of former Providence Mayor Vincent Buddy Cianci. I believe in forgiveness, but I don't believe in the things he did. He got caught, but there were other people who do the same thing and didn't get caught. I said if we ran again, I'd vote for him. Why is that? Because I like him. And I think he did do a lot for Providence. He really did. I think he did a good job on tarnishing uh, the image of the city and himself especially. But apparently it doesn't make so much of a uh, difference in Rhode Island how tarnished anybody is in a leading position. You know, in politics there's no clean sheets. And I think, you know, when you look and you see what he did for this city and what he did, the driving force behind most of the money that went to build all this, I think he did a lot. He might have done some bad things and we know how that works. but. Uh, Obviously, uh, he did a lot of good things, too. Many people we spoke to felt that Cianci was the man responsible for the revival of Providence. He started this. He started Water Place Park. He made Water Place Park what it was. He made the Renaissance what it was. Yeah, he did a lot of bad, but he did a lot of good, too. But some people had a more critical view of Cianci's legacy. He went away, and I feel like the city has improved in his absence. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. I think anyone else could do just as well of a job. I think Providence is on the move. So with the momentum we've got going, I think that it'll keep going with or without him. And I just hope he'll get on with his life and make restitution, whatever that means for him and whatever that means for the city of Providence. Well, joining us now is Cherry Arnold, the maker of the documentary, Buddy, the rise and fall of America's most notorious mayor. Cherry, thanks for coming. I saw the documentary today for the first time. I liked it. It's entertaining. It's a history lesson, isn't it? Yes. You learn a lot about Rhode Island. Yeah. How long did you work on it? Uh, it took me a total of three and a half years to make the film. Right. You were with him pre-Plunder Dome and then post-Plunder Dome. I followed him for about a year, a couple of months before the trial started and then up to a couple of days before he left for prison. What kind of access? I assume you had pretty good access from what I can tell. I had. Uh, you know, it was a daily thing, you know, I would request um, access to different meetings and events that he would go to, but it was not an open door at all. Right. Yeah. I assume you saw the whole gamut, what they say is the good buddy, the bad buddy, the flash of anger, the hysterically funny, charming uh, bundle that he has, that he is. I did. Right. What I surprised did. you the most in following him? You know, I think what surprised me the most was uh, at times he was very insecure. He would give a great speech to this, you know, a group at say Brown University and then he'd come off the stage and say, I don't know why they wanted me here, you right. know. So I, I found that very interesting. A little later at, at some point we're gonna see some clips that never made the, the final cut, but he tells you to turn that camera off. Uh, did he get angry at you at any point? A couple of times he did. Yeah. Yeah. I assume though you had. But we, ha we had a pretty good working relationship. For the most part, I was really in the background, and he understood that I was shooting a verite type right. approach to the, to the film, and uh, so we kept out of each other's way for the most part. Have you heard from him since the film's release? I haven't heard from him directly, but he has seen the movie. And I got it to him at the Halfway House in Boston. Your understanding of his review is? Uh, I think he had some a uh, couple of nitpicks here and there, but for the most part, he liked the movie. He liked the movie. Yeah. Well, it's, it, it is funny, it's entertaining, it, it's, a, it's a lot of things, and I suppose that's what a good documentary is about. Is that why you chose him? Because of his personality? Well, you know, really, for documentary filmmakers, a, a lot of what we're looking for is a controversial story, right. you know, something that is not 
a slam dunk, you know, something, as, particularly when you can follow a character like Buddy Sands who has so much, you know, controversy and so much passion. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I thought that it would be really interesting to follow him and what might be his last year in office. All right, we'll, we'll talk more about this coming up at this broadcast. Thanks for being with us for now, though. Thank We're you. going to take a short break, but we'll be right back with more on the Cianci story, including some gems from the NBC10 archives and outtakes from Cherry Arnold's film. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gene Valicenti with Citizen Cianci. I'm from Water Place Restaurant tonight with a look at the next chapter in the Buddy story. Truth is, we took the bait. Time and again, the mayor would delight his friends and infuriate his foes through his skillful manipulation of the media. He helped us, we helped him. He was always a good story. As NBC10 political reporter Bill Rapley confirms following a visit to our video vault. It looks like an old-fashioned political rally, and the star of the day is Buddy Cianci. Here's Buddy. For more than 20 years, the master of the photo opportunity, always finding a colorful way to get his message onto the evening news. Time for renovations at City Hall? Grab a golden crowbar, climb a ladder, and get things started. From the very beginning, young Mayor Cianci knew how to capture the public's imagination. Providence has a history of attracting great actors, and some say, on the political stage, Vincent Buddy Cianci was one of the greatest. <laughs> Buddy always knew how to make a grand entrance, and few people could work a crowd the way he did. Like a film director, Cianci had an instinct for picking the right location. He understood the value of props, and how to win over a hostile audience. I'm able to announce now that there will be no layoffs and everyone be reinstated. Today, every politician wants to project the image of the family man. Look how easily Buddy did it 30 years ago. He knew how to show off his shining accomplishments, but in a humble kind of way. Number two, I guess it's because I was able to win in the city of Providence an election that no one really expected anybody or expected me to win last year. It made people wonder, did Cianci want to be a mayor or a movie star? Do you need to join the Actors Guild? You've ridden a bulldozer in one week and now you've worked with a gold crowbar. No, I, I don't believe we have to do that, but uh, uh, I, I don't belong to the, uh, to the Actors Guild. Uh, but maybe I should, because we're going to have some nice shows here in City Hall. Critics would later argue that some of the shows Cianci brought to City Hall weren't so pretty. Buddy made news around here for more than 30 years, and NBC10 Sunrise anchor Frank Coletta prod some local pundits for their thoughts. We asked members of the media for their thoughts on the return of Vincent Buddy Cianci. Ron St. Pierre, WPRO AM radio morning news host, visited Cianci in federal prison. Did that subject come up any regret, remorse for some of the things that uh, he is charged with doing the negative things? Regret, maybe. Remorse, no. Um, I don't think you can, and you have to remember, Frank, that he's, uh, he's maintained his innocence throughout this whole thing. So how do you show remorse for something that you, know, you claim you didn't do? He had 13 charges against him, I think, and he got found guilty of one. The one basically saying, bad things happened on your watch. The way I kind of think about Buddy is that Greg Allman song, I'm No Angel. Although I'll steal your diamonds, I'll give you back some gold. You know, it's, it was that kind of a thing. He'd, for everything he did that was kind of unsavory, he'd always have something that could come back that was good for the city. The Providence Journal has a long history of criticizing Cianci. We asked several of the journal writers to talk to us, but the journal declined our request to participate in this program. Ed Acorn is totally out of line in his editorial saying that Buddy shouldn't come back to Rhode Island. I mean, who is he? Uh, you know, we have the, all the people who founded the journal that traded in slaves, they're living on the east side, they're, and they're, so are their progeny. So if they don't have to move, I don't see why Buddy should have to move. It's funny to me that you've got all these people who are running him down, and yet they're writing about him. And so they're giving him publicity. It's the old thing of just make sure you spell my name right. 
He told me on one of the visits to prison that he has no aspirations to get back into the political arena. But that's while he's in prison. Who knows? I don't know where his niche is going to be. It may, in fact, be radio, but I think there's just more question marks floating over his head, bald or toupeed, than we ever could have imagined before now. I think he could walk into a radio station five minutes after he is officially released from home confinement. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him on TV as a political analyst. I mean, you know, all, all sins are forgiven and bring him on because there's nobody that knows politics as well as Buddy. And I would say to the politicians, if he does get a radio or TV gig, look out. And how should Cianci be treated by the public when he rejoins society? People who love him will forgive him and welcome him back. People who hate his guts will find everything wrong about everything he says and does. And I, so I think how to treat Buddy Cianci is how to treat a human being. He's Citizen Cianci now. You know, he did his time, and I think he should be treated like anybody else. He's free to do anything he should be able to do. Our NBC 10 special, Citizen Cianci, continues in just a moment when some of his best friends and harshest critics have their say. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Gene Valicenti. Welcome back to Water Place Park and Citizen Cianci. We're at the Water Place Restaurant in Providence, and we thank our hosts. We're overlooking one of the highlights of the Cianci administration, Water Place Park. Buddy Cianci crossed paths and at times swords with plenty of allies and enemies. And NBC 10 news anchor Patrice Wood has been gathering the mixed opinions on the city's longest serving mayor. Vincent Cianci has been a controversial figure since he was first elected to office in 1974. But everyone agrees that Buddy has never had a shortage of supporters, rivals, and opponents. Former city councilman and city solicitor Charles Mancillillo has worked with Mayor Cianci for more than 30 years. Prior to his mayoralty, it was more of the, you know, so-called old boys group. But Buddy brought people in. Critics charge that during both of his administrations, Cianci brought the wrong kind of people into City Hall. Many of the, those that he did appoint, as in any other profession or business, were probably people who were, uh, uh, who were not the uh, most honest people. But the vast majority of people that he appointed were very competent and honest personnel. Overall, I will say he hurt the city and the state. Antonio Freitas helped federal prosecutors to convict Buddy Cianci of racketeering conspiracy. It has been said that he were, there was a good body and a bad body. The problem with that, I don't agree with that. There was a bad body. I think people in our community are very forgiving people. And I've had people come up to me in the street, and I've never seen this before, to thank me for lending him a helping hand. Former Providence Mayor Joe Paolino Jr. offered Cianci a job when he was released on home confinement after serving more than four years in federal prison. If people want to know, did they break his spirit, the answer is absolutely not. If they want to know, was he in a bad place, the answer is yes, he was. He was not in a camp, not one of these country clubs that people hear about. He was in a tough place, barbed wire, cinder block, so he didn't have a picnic, but they did not break him. And what about Cianci's future employment? It certainly is no secret that uh, local radio talk shows uh, are interested, very interested in bringing him on board. If I was a friend of him and tell him what to do, I would say lay low, stay out of the public, you've done enough uh, damage. It wouldn't surprise me at all for him to get back into the media get involved with television and radio. I mean, he's a natural at it. People know that he is. And he's got such an institutional knowledge of what takes place in Rhode Island. Mayor Cianci is expected to complete his sentence in a matter of hours. What kind of reception should he expect from the public? And a lot of people like him and say, well, let's give him a parade and let's do this, let's do that. But the same people, if you ask them, will you vote for body, they will say no. If you ask them, 
you think is corrupt, they will say yes. So some people want to show, uh, they, want, they, they want to have fun, but they still don't trust him. I think they're going to welcome him uh, with open arms. They just want him home. And all he wanted to do was just come home again. We asked viewers to rate the Cianci administration, and more than 6,000 viewers responded to our web poll. 6,000. Here are some of the results. 20% said his impact as mayor was all good. 60% mostly good. 14% mostly bad. 4% all bad. Asked if you would vote for him again. 52% of those responded said yes. 47% said no. You can view the complete results by logging on to turnto10.com tonight. This NBC 10 special, Citizen Cianci, continues with more exclusive film footage and an announcement from Cherry Arnold, director of the documentary on Cianci's life, when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Following this live broadcast of Citizen Cianci, NBC10 brings you the documentary, Buddy, The Rise and Fall of America's Most Notorious Mayor. These are three compelling clips now that never made the final cut. Sure, I'm a Democrat, but 28,000 Democrats can't be wrong. I'm going for Buddy Cianci. Beat the machine November 5th with Buddy Cianci. I am a Democrat, and I am voting for Cianci. I like Cianci. He's young, aggressive, and I like his attitude. I'm a Democrat, and I'm voting for Buddy Cianci because I want to make my vote count. Beat the Machine, November 5th, with Buddy Cianci. Able to say, people ask me, what's the best thing you think your administration and the people have accomplished all these years you've been mayor? And I say, they say, it's the mall. No, it's not that. It's part mall. It's taking the zoo and making that one of the ten best in America, where animals were escaping from it 15 or 20 years ago. Then we, and then you take... You, you take, you, you take, we ever had a movie theater, now we got like 20, 22 of them in the Are city. Are you on amphetamines or All those things. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you. Are you on amphetamines? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> and, and so it's raising the self-esteem. Amen. You know, you've been up since 4 o'clock in the morning, I understand you're tired, <laughs> you know. Come on, what Check your retirement papers yet? <laughs> not yet, I haven't. Stop I looking. <laughs> Stop looking. Uh, I, think, I think you're on the hit parade. I don't know that for a fact, but I... If I had to guess, okay. this is in a multiple meeting, this is an upbeat meeting. Uh, the best of, shut that thing off, will you please? Joining us again tonight is Cherry Arnold, the filmmaker that, of the film we're about to see. Uh, Cherry, you own a domain or a web address that he's interested in, and you've made a decision. What is that? Yes, uh, buddy, I registered BuddyCiancy.com because I, I knew it would help the movie, the marketing of the movie right. a lot. Um, but I'm going to give him that domain the day that I release the DVD, which will be later on this fall. Right. And then the movie will move to BuddyCiancyMovie.com. Anything in exchange for that? Uh, any, uh, any promises or exclusivity? No, no, just an overall, you know, I, I actually said that I would give him the domain when I was done with it, right. um, back when I registered it in 2003. In watching your documentary today, I'm struck uh, in the history in it, in that history repeats itself. He had a chief of staff who was convicted in one of the earlier terms, a chief of staff convicted and plundered them. He went away, he went on the radio. This seems to be happening all again. Do you expect him to come back and run for politics someday? He can. Yeah, I don't, well, from what he's told me in his letters, I don't think he's interested in, in being in office again, but you never know. Um, I do know, and I think most people know, that he's probably going to end up on a radio station. Um, yeah. It's just a question of where. All right. You picked my curiosity from what he's told you in his letters. Uh, he's written to you, I take it. What has he told you? I don't, I don't want you to disclose a confidence, but what can you tell us? Yeah, you know, I, in general, I was just really struck by how forward-looking he always was in all of his letters, you know, all the things, he was just always talking about his plans for when he got out and whether that was the second year he was in or the third year, you know, he had the number of days counted, would mention it more than once during the course of the letter, and, you know, he was just, he was ready to hit the ground running when he got back here. Do you sense he is still the same sort of person, sense of humor-wise? Absolutely. Lots of humor in these letters, for sure. I'm going to tell people when they watch the documentary to pay particular attention to FBI agent Aiken's segment. It's telling and it's compelling in getting the government side of the story across. I haven't heard Aiken uh, this extensively. What will you tell people to pay particular attention to? You know, it's hard for me to, as 
person that made the movie to say watch a particular part, but you know, when you're doing a biographical film, you want to lay the groundwork right in the beginning to help right. people understand a, someone's character. And I would say, pay attention to that. All right, we will. Cherry, thanks again for being with us. Thank you. Few people have covered Buddy Cianci as closely as the I Team's Jim Terracani, who also served a stretch on home confinement for refusing to disclose the source of a Plunder Dome evidence tape. Tonight, though, Jim takes a lighter look at the trials and tribulations of Cianci and other infamous felons. Buddy's not alone and looking to make some dough. Plenty before him got their own shows. Ollie North got convicted for the Contra affair, but he got a radio show that's still on the air. Rush Limbaugh popped pills he got without a script, but his excellence in broadcasting is really quite a trip. Tom Finneran up in Boston stepped down in disgrace, but he's on RKO in a ratings race. Martha Stewart told a lie and did time in the can, but she's back on the tube making her jam. Former Governor Rowland got caught cheating. He doesn't have a show, but makes money for speaking. D.C.'s Marion Barry convicted for coke, but he still got reelected. Some say it was a joke. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Bill Clinton got impeached for those stains on that dress, but now gets 200 grand for making an address. So Buddy is free at last, looking for a gig. No doubt he'll be on the radio, but will he be big? He's got talent and smarts and can be quite funny, but it remains to be seen how many people still love Buddy. But he's with us again. He's done his time and he's on the mend. He's helped out the city for 20 plus years, got plenty of credit, got lots of cheers. So we'll be looking at you, Buddy, in this next phase of your life. That's all from this reporter and to all, a good night. We want to thank our guest, Cherry Arnold, once again, and encourage you to stay with us for her award-winning documentary, Buddy, The Rise and Fall of America's Most Notorious Mayor, shown without commercial interruption right after this broadcast. As you've seen tonight, Buddy remains a lightning rod for public opinion. Some view his impending release as cause for celebration. Some say he hasn't been punished enough. Others wish he'd just go away and that we'd stop giving him so much attention. This much we can say with certainty. Cianci was convicted of a serious crime by a jury of his peers. He lost on appeal and served out his sentence without incident. Supporters and critics agree that he's a man with a lot of energy and plenty of talents with undeniable accomplishments and indelible failures. So in a few hours, will we be getting the good buddy or the bad buddy back? Well, that decision rests solely in the hands of Citizen Cianci. I'm Gene Valicenti. Thanks for joining us tonight. Good night.